Hello, so in this video, we're actually gonna start doing a little bit of coding, nothing too extravagant at the moment. And then we're gonna talk about some basic ideas later on. So first things first, R is just a really big calculator, really, really powerful calculator. So we come over here to the console. This is any time we wanna do something in R, we type it into the console. Uh, and let's just do some basic calculations. Let's just treat it as a calculator. So let's type in three plus two. Just simply type that in on my on my keyboard. Okay, I want R to run that now. So all I do is I press enter and it will return me five. So it's done three plus two and it's returned me the value of five. Now notice it's returned me this sort of one with a with sort of square brackets at the start. Don't worry about that. All that simply means is, okay, later on, we may want to do some calculations which returns more than one value, okay? So this just tells me, this is the first row of the values which it's returned. It's just kind of telling me how many values it's, it's returning, okay? So don't worry about that. That just tells me it's the first row of the output, okay? Uh, let's keep going then. Let's do three minus two, Ooh, three minus two. Again, press enter and it returns me the value one. Um, let's do multiplication. So remember there's no times, um, symbol on the on the keyboard so we have to use the star so let's do three times two okay press enter and it's returned me the value six again let's do divide again no divide symbol uh on the on the keyboard so uh, i just use the slash the forward slash okay so three divided by two now r doesn't return uh, sort of third answers, it only returns decimal. So this should give me not three over two as a fraction, but 1.5, which it does. Uh, let's keep going. Let's do three to the power of two. Now to the power is just simply this, uh, this arrow, this upwards facing arrow, which is shift six. Press enter, returns me the value nine. Now something to be careful of here. Um, I don't think our, it matters in R too much, but it's good practice. If I wanna do three to the power of 27, okay, always put that in brackets, put the 27 in brackets, because you're saying three to the power of, not just two, but to the whole 27, okay? We would read that as three to the power of 27, but our, uh, or computers may not. Like they would just say three to the power of two, then what do I do with a seven, okay? You've got to think in a computer's mindset. So three to the power of 27, and it returns me that. And all that just means is 7.625, blah, 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 blah. E, e plus 12 just simply means times 10 to the power of 12. So seven times 10 to the 12, okay? Um, we can also do square roots. Now square root, we need to employ the square root function. And the square root function is just simply SQRT, obviously. But because it's a function, and we'll talk about functions again in the next few videos, we need to put brackets around it to the thing which we're trying to apply the function to. So we just go shift nine, okay, open the brackets. And the nice thing about R Studio is it will automatically close those brackets as well. I should call them parentheses, but Everyone calls them brackets. So yeah, I open the brackets. Nice thing about R Studio is it will automatically close those parentheses as well. Tell me, st tell R stop taking the square root when I finish that. Um, so yeah, R will automatically do that for you. So let's do the square root of, I don't know, square root of nine and I get three back. Okay, so that's the first thing which R can do. It's just basically a really powerful calculator. So um, the next thing though, is inevitably when we're writing programs and writing code, we're going to come to a point where we're just going to want to save a number as a value or save something as just a label so that when we keep coming back to it, we don't have to keep typing that same thing over and over again. So let's first of all clear my console. I do that by pressing control L. That's cleared my console for me. Um, so let's do this. Okay, so let's say, for example, I'm writing a bit of code and I don't want to keep on typing out the number a thousand over and over and over again. I just want to store that as a letter. So every time I type that letter, R just knows, ah, oh, right, that's the number a thousand. The way which I do that, okay, I give it a name. I'm just gonna call it A, but you can call it pretty much anything you like. Um, so I'm just gonna say A equals 1000, okay? And then notice that over here, in my window over here, my values window, it tells me that A has been stored as the value 1000. So every time now I type A, so for example, I type A over here, press enter, R returns me the value 1000. Okay, so it just saves me having to write out the same thing over and over and over again. Now there's a couple of ways that I can store values. This is the first way with an equals, and that kind of makes sense to us as a mathematician, you know, A equals 1000, X equals two, Y equals minus three, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, That makes sense to us with an equals as a mathematician. But there's another way of doing it, and it's with an arrow. Now there's no arrow symbol on the on the keyboard, um, so the way which we do that is with a less than dash. So let's call it something else. Let's call it something really cool. Let's call it um, bear. I don't know why I thought of bear, but there we go. Um, and I want that. I want to store two thousand. 
as is in bear. So the way which I'm gonna do that is with a less than dash, type 2000, press enter, and now you can see over here that my bear variable has been stored with the value 2000. So now every time I type bear and press enter, it stores the number two, it brings me back 2000. Now, why has R got these two different ways of, of storing values? Why has it got equals and why has it got this less than dash? Well, the reason being is quite subtle and it's worthwhile investing time in it now. Um, basically, any time you want to save a number, I would always use equals. So, for example, let's just do another one. So, C equals five. Okay, C equals five. You can see over here that C has been stored with the value five. Um, Anytime you want to actually do something with that, though, I would use the less than. So let me show you by example. Let's say I want to take C, which is currently five, and add one to it. And then I want to use that value, whatever that is, it's six. I want to use that value as a new value of C. Let me say that again. So I'm going to take the current value of C. I'm going to add one to it. And then that is going to be stored as a new value of C. So the way which you'd write this as a, as a code is actually really, really weird because you'd say C equals c plus one. Okay, so c equals c plus one. Now, we as mathematicians are looking at that and saying that makes no sense. Okay, because there is no number for c where that number plus one is equal to that same number. So you take a number, add one to it, and you get the same number back. There's no number that exists that. But that's not what R is reading. That's not what the computer is reading. What the computer is reading is the current value of c added to one sorry, add one to the current value of C, and then that gets stored as the new value of C. That's what the computer is reading. So you can see over here that when I run that, press enter, I don't know why it's being so slow today. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, I can see now that C has been stored with six. Okay, so C equals C plus one, basically means take the current value of C, which was five, add one to it, to make that six, then that becomes a new value of C. That's what the C equals C plus one means. But like I say, we as mathematicians are really uncomfortable with that because that doesn't make sense mathematically. That abuses the symbol equals. Well, R kind of accepts that and says, okay, there, there, I'll let you use the arrow symbol. Okay, so the arrow symbol simply means take the current value of C, add one to it, and then that goes to the new value of C. So it's no longer equals, it's kind of like moving into the new value of C. Um, and then you press equals and it should become now because the current value of C is six, you can see over here, C six plus one is seven. So C should become seven, which you can see it's been changed to seven over here. So basically, Anytime you want to just save a number in a label, you just use the word, you just use equals, okay? Anytime you actually want to do something with it, I would always use the arrow, the less than dash. Um, one word of caution though, you know, you can use pretty much anything, um, you know, to, to, to save um, a number to or to, to do something to. Um, you can use any kind of label uh, anytime you want to, you want to write something. However, you don't want to really start off with a number, okay, when you're saving a label. So don't use a label which starts with a number because uh, that just gets confusing, like one, nine, two, five, you know, something like that. It just gets a little bit confusing. Uh, also, there are predefined R functions, which again, we're going to talk about in the next few videos. Don't try and use those. So for example, vector, um, you can see down here, this tells me that vector has already been stored in R as a specific function. So I can't, for example, use the word vector um, to be a label, okay? So just be aware of that. Now, the nice thing about using R Studio is it will come up, uh, so for example, matrix is another one, and it will come up with matrix. So it tells me that's already been stored as a label. That's already been used. I can't use that one again. So as long as you don't use some mat would be fine. For, oh, no, it wouldn't. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you just basically don't want to reuse uh, something which is already used. Not. You don't want to use a function. You don't want to start with a letter.